Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's Asa Abloy virtual instructor-led training. The eighth part of eight, our final part of the series for hardware applications for hospital. My name is Katie Flower. I am your lead instructor for today. And we've got a lot to unpack. Uh, before we do, I do want to remind you that this session is being recorded and will be available on the Asabloy Academy website within 24 hours of this presentation being finished. And if you go to the virtual instructor led training tab on the top right hand corner, you will find a link to any previously recorded sessions. If you happen to miss any of the eight part series, you can go back and watch, or if you need to review and rewatch any of the eight part series, it's there for you, as well as any other of our sessions that we have uh, throughout the week. Also within 24 hours, you will receive a thank you email for attending the session. It is good for one credit hour. Each of these individual classes has been worth one hour of credit for continuing education, you do need to self-report and you can use the email as your proof of attendance. If you have any questions during today's session, please feel free to use the Q&A button at any point in time. I have certain uh, extra openings that we have not reviewed that I want to review, but certainly keep your questions in mind. Uh, there will be some interactivity. I do have some poll questions when it comes time, uh, kind of like a, a quiz, a recap, but just also, you know, no fear. Nobody can see your answers. I can't see your answers. It's a poll type question. So the only thing is once you put your answer, you can't change it. So I'll give you about 45 seconds or so to answer. And when the majority of everybody has answered, we'll reveal the results and talk about the answers and move on from there. I would like to start off with a little bit of humor. I saw this yesterday on Twitter and uh, actually chuckled right out loud. That's my kind of joke. Okay, so the first opening I wanna take a look at today is a pair of cross quarter doors. We have a lot of these in hospitals and what differentiates this from one of or a couple of the ones that we've previously looked at. We look at the walls and there's a one hour smoke partition. So 20 minute rated door. And it does have the symbol for the hold open right here. But what is different, they also show if you look, this is pocketed into the wall. That takes some coordination with the depth of the magnetic hold open versus the depth of the pocket, but this door should be in line with the wall and you'll need to coordinate with the architect the depth of your magnetic hold open and any other hardware that you would have that could conflict. 20 minute pair, it is a seven foot four wide pair of doors and we'll take a look at the hardware on this one first, the hardware set. We're using the right door and the right door is designed specifically for these perfect types of applications where you have a pocket and the door is hung on continuous hinges. You've got concealed exit devices, very low profile exit devices. I'll show you the video on the next slide so you can see how low profile those exit devices are. And when those doors are open and pocketed because those exit devices barely stick out at all, you have almost the full width of the corridor but these 20 minute doors will close and latch at the time of fire. They are built into the, the fire alarm system. Um, actually, this pair does not have the hold open. This pair has power operators. The next pair has the hold open. Um, so I'm not sure if the drawing was wrong or something changed, but this particular pair that we're about to look at is cross corridor with power operators. They are right doors with low profile exit devices. You have electric latch retraction exit devices, press wall switch on either side. There is no card access on this particular opening. And anything else difference, uh, 
heavy duty wall stops are smoke seal. The smoke seal is required on a 20 minute door. 20 minute doors do require smoke seal. We also have the smoke seal astragal, uh, the Electrolynx harnesses, the power transfers. Let's take a look at this opening. It's the same Markar hinge that we've used with the wraparound edge to protect the edge of the door. It's a plastic laminate face on a hollow metal door. So it looks like a wood door, but it's a hollow metal door. The exit devices are built in to the door. You can see they're very low profile. And that's the electric latch retraction that pulls the bar in and pulls the latch. There's no, it's uh, less bottom rod. So there's no strike in the floor, no hole in the floor. If you have any questions at any time, please feel free to chime in. I'll be looking for the questions. Otherwise, I'm just going to continue. This one is the one that is pocketed and has the hold open. And we'll see how it differs from the last one. It is 20 minute rated. It is a smoke barrier door and cross quarter double egress with the magnetic hold open tied to the fire alarm system for release. Here is the hardware set. They are also right doors. They're pocketed, 20 minute rated, concealed exit devices, less bottom rod, and magnetic hold opens. This one, the closers are mounted on the wall. You see in the notes, mount closer body on the wall and the shoe on the door for pocket application. That's called a pocket application door closer. And when you see the video and I pull the uh, door off the magnetic hold open, you'll see that the closer is mounted to the wall. That helps make sure that it's coordinated properly with the pocket depth and the magnetic hold open so that it doesn't interfere, the arm doesn't interfere as that door uh, goes into the pocket. It does require smoke seal, same continuous hinges that we've been using. We'll take a look at the video of the opening. See how nice they fit in the pocket and the door is, is not even a target for carts at all. There's the closer on the wall with the arm on the door. They have the wraparound metal edges So with the handrail there, there really is, these doors become very low profile. They're almost, almost like you wouldn't see them if they were painted the same color as the wall or the same plastic laminate as the wall, they would blend right in. There's a view from, I guess a different direction. That's that same pair. So it's green walls on one side, tan walls on the other. Any questions on right doors? We had a ton of these. Any doors that they wanted to hold open and pocket, we used the right door. We also used the right door on a lot of the elevator lobby doors just because of the functionality, they, the way that they wanted to hold them open. And uh, all the hardware is installed at the factory and shipped. So the door, you just hang it in the frame. Everything is already built into the door. The exam rooms on the first floor were unique and hold on, we've got a question. Yes, the closer is installed in the, on the wall because it's a pocket application. Uh, that's called a pocket closer application. And it's quite common when you have a door that's pocketed, you have to coordinate the depth of the pocket with the magnetic hold open as well as the closer.
And then the other question for the right doors, do we always, do we always need to order the doors with the hardware with Seco or Curry's? And yes, uh, the right door does come with the hardware. Now the hardware can be specified. The exit devices will be Adam's right, right door exit devices, but you can specify mark our hinges, Rickson, uh, hold opens and Norton door closers to match the rest of the facility. Couldn't the closer have been mounted under jam mount? I think you mean parallel arm mounted and technically yes, but the whole purpose of the pocket door is to kind of make it very low profile. And so using the pocket mounted makes perfect sense. Technically, yes, you could use parallel arm mount. Any other questions before we move on to the exam room? And you don't have to use right doors there. You could do the same type of setup using pivots or um, even with continuous hinges with a standard wood door, it just takes extra coordination to do so. But the right doors just work very well, especially with the low profile exit device. It gives you the full width of the corridor and the doors are almost like they're not there. The continuous hinges are not swing clear hinges. They are just uh, the standard hinge because the frame, the way that it's situated, there, there is no need for those to be swing clear hinges. I don't see any other questions, so we will look at these exam room pairs of doors. The exam rooms on the first floor were unique and we ended up having to do something special for them. As you can see, one leaf is narrower than the other unequal leaf pair and one leaf swings into the exam room, the other one swings 180 degrees out of the exam room. And yes, it does overlap the next door. So how do you stop this door at 180 degrees and yet still uh, allow it to swing 180 degrees? That was one question. And, and so that anything on the wall or anything here does not hit the back of this door, what type of stop would you use? Be thinking about that as we look at this. This is within a care suite. So the smoke partition is here and the perimeter is around the outside. This is one entire patient care suite. That means that these doors are not rated. You can see that the walls are just plain. There's no smoke rating on these because they're within that care suite. Okay, so the first poll question is going to be about this pair of doors as specifically, how do you stop this door, the 180 degree leaf? So here's the question and I'm going to launch the poll. What type of stop do you use for the outswing door that swings 180 degrees? Do you use A, a standard wall stop, B, a concealed overhead stop, C, a straight roller stop, or D, a baseboard stop? I'll give you about 45 seconds to answer it. We 
about five more seconds. There's several of you that haven't answered. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. We have a mixed bag, which is fine. Uh, six thought that a standard wall stop would work. Uh, a, a standard wall stop is not going to work because there's other obstructions behind the door and the frame on the other door would not allow the wall stop to work. You could theoretically put it on the face of the frame, but that's really with the lever handle, it's, it's not going to get there. It's not going to reach that. A concealed overhead stop is not the solution because any overhead stop, whether it's surface mounted or concealed, will only allow the door to swing 110 degrees. And a uh, baseboard stop isn't going to be the solution because you don't want anything down near the floor that if, if you're gonna be waxing the floors or mopping the floors, the baseboard stop would interfere with that. So two of you got the right answer, the straight roller stop. Let me show you what that looks like and why that was the solution. It's a rare, animal. It's not something that you normally see all the time, but this is the straight roller stop. It's got a rubber bumper on it, and we'll take a look at where it was mounted specifically. It was mounted towards the top of the frame for the next door uh, set of doors. So this door can swing close to 180 degrees. It's going to hit that bumper and stop there's also hand sanitizers on the wall, which is another reason why you wouldn't want to use a wall stop. You've got to be aware of other obstructions that are typically on the wall in a hospital. So this door swings 180 degrees over to here. Let's take a look at the, all, the overall hardware set. You also note, and we'll look at the video of this in just a second also, the uh, stop on the frame is a little unique because we had to have custom made frames for this application. We're using pivots. Uh, they are offset hung pivots with an intermediate pivot. Make sure when we watch the video that you take a look at those, but one door swings in, the other door swings out. But instead of like with a double egress where they're centered on the frame, these doors are on the outside portion of the frame. So the pivots allow the door to swing without any inter interference with the frame. We're using a roller latch because this is inside of a care suite, there is no need to have latching hardware. And so a roller latch can be used just to give them a little sense of feel of a, a latching when they pull the door closed or when the door closes. Push plates on each leaf and the type of door pull that we used is an old style hospital arm pull. And again, makes it easy to be able to tuck your arm underneath and pull the door open. Delayed action closers to help with uh, being able to get the, the bed in and out. And then one leaf has a hold open. The smaller leaf going into the room has a hold open. They wanna be able to hold open the three foot wide leaf the four foot wide leaf would have just a uh, parallel arm mounted heavy duty closer and then the roller stop on one leaf, the wide leaf and the regular wall stop for the, the small leaf. can see you get very nearly 180 degrees on that and the roller bumper stops the door from hitting the sanitizer or the other door and then the in-swing door swings against the wall stop. It's a cased open frame with an applied stop so that it can act like a double egress and then it's got an astragal welded to the outside as a stop for that smaller leaf. 
but you can see how the pivots, even on this cased open frame, the pivots do allow this door to swing 90 degrees. Here's a close up of the roller latch. And you can see that this is almost like glazing bead, but it's a standard soffit width that is applied with screws. And then this is just like a flat astragal that's applied to the header to create the stop for the smaller three foot wide leaf. That way the doors are in alignment. When the doors are closed, they line up with each other. They look like a standard pair of doors but one door swings in and one door swings out. And this is the Unitrol hold open arm on the smaller three foot wide leaf so that they can hold that door open at 90 degrees. This is not a, this is not a standard opening, but the thing that you'll find in some hospitals is strange openings like this that you've never seen before. And coming up with some kind of a solution a way to make it happen is critical. We, we talked this through with the owner and the architect and even provided a mock-up so that they could see it and feel it, make sure that it was going to work the way that they wanted it to. And it worked like a charm. They've got over a hundred of these in that exam area. Next, uh, okay, we've got a question. Does the active door have a closer? If so, why have the roller catch? Yes, it does have a closer. The roller catch is just to give the feel so that the doors don't bounce, so that you get that latching. It, it's not a strong latch like a regular hospital latch or a mortise lock would provide, but it's just so that the doors have a little bit of, of a catch. Plus, inside hospitals, remember that they they change the air every hour like six to eight times and so there's a lot of air circulation it just helps keep that door so that it's not a jar it's not um it so that it's in line with the other door that that was the purpose of it okay this pair of lead line doors should look very similar to the one that we talked about a few days ago. The difference is this one is not inside of a back of house suite. This one is off of a primary corridor and so we have card access. And with lead in the center of the door, we're going to treat the hardware the same as what we had on the other lead line doors with the uh, lead line pivots and uh, closers the door doesn't normally need to, to lock, but in this case, because of the card reader, we do need to lock the door. I want you to think about with the lead in the center of the door, a 16th inch thick lead in the center of the door, what type of locking hardware would you use? Before I show you the hardware set and we talk about it. Let me get the polling for the next one. There you go. So would you use A, a fail secure mortise lock, B, a mag lock with emergency push button and motion sensor inside, or C, a fail safe mortise lock? The lead is a 16th inch centered in the door. About five more seconds. And again, a, a pretty mixed bag. Uh, fail secure mortise lock. If this were 
with the lead underneath the veneer instead of in the center of the door, then yes, a fail secure mortise lock would work perfectly fine here. The reason that you don't want to use a fail secure mortise lock with the lead in the center of the door is the raceway that you have to core through the door will go right through the center of that sheet of the lead. And so that's a problem. The fail safe mortise lock, same thing. Your, your through wire would come straight through the center of the lead through the door, but it wouldn't need to be fail safe. As long as you have free egress, this is an, a uh, CT scan room. You can always get out from the inside with a fail secure mortise lock. In a fire, you don't need to go into this room, so it wouldn't need to be fail safe with a mortise lock. The mag lock with the emergency push button and motion sensor inside complying with access controlled egress for special locking arrangements would be the appropriate way to go. Let's take a look at the hardware set. Could you use a mortise with lead wrap pockets and rows? If you're going to use a mortise lock, you would have to use lead wrap, but how are you going to lead wrap your raceway? You've got a raceway 3 8 inch diameter bore through from the hinge or from the pivot over to the mortise lock, and that's gonna go straight through the center of the lead. So there's no way to lead wrap that. Here is the pair. We're using the hospital latch just like we did on the other hardware set. So it looks just like all the other radiology rooms, but we have the card reader because it's on the main corridor. They have the in-use light and the mag lock is surface mounted. So we're using the heavy duty lead line pivots, the L147 set from Rickson and all the same hardware as the other x-ray rooms the only difference is the mag lock and then on the inside of the room there's a motion sensor for free egress and an emergency push button to meet the requirements of access controlled egress. We have a pair of doors leading to the exterior and they are just around the corner from the inmate section, this particular hospital is in a very busy city and they do have uh, the need. Sometimes you have criminals that are injured in a gang fight or something like that. And they haven't, you know, they haven't gone to jail yet, but they're in the hospital. They've got some kind of injury. You need to protect them from the rest of, you need to protect the rest of the patients, the rest of the population from these people uh, while they're trying to heal. So this corridor is an egress corridor. There is controlled egress coming out of and an interlock coming out of here, but the appropriate hardware for this pair of doors, because there's other parts of the hospital that are accessed through here, would be with delayed egress. And here's a very common delayed egress setup. You have a pair of doors, rim by rim by removable mullion. The card reader will momentarily unlock the doors from the egress side. If I don't use the card reader as I'm exiting, this door will not allow me to get out for 30 seconds. And you can push on the exit device. This is the Securitron IMXDA all self-contained delayed egress. It's got the key switch built into it for the reset. You have to go to the door and reset the delayed egress device. But if I do not use a valid credential and just push on this door, the alarm will sound and in 30 seconds, it will allow me to get out. If there is a fire, this is tied to the fire alarm system and will drop on fire alarm. But staff, who goes in and out will use their card reader to make sure that the alarm does not sound. In a standard situation, other type of occupancies, the maximum delay is 15 seconds. There is in healthcare occupancies, an exception that will allow you to have 30 second delay. And this was one of those doors. 
Any questions on delayed egress? Let's talk about isolation rooms. Isolation patient rooms in hospitals can have multiple functions. It depends on what types of patients they're trying to isolate. But very frequently you will see an anteroom. This is the, the door for the patient bedroom. It will typically have the same standard hardware. Door closers are not necessarily required here. It depends on the type of isolation room. If it's infectious control, not only will you want closers, but you're gonna want some kind of a seal all the way around the door, including the door bottom and an astragal seal. But you're probably going to, one of the questions to the architect and the owner is, do you wanna lock this door? So depending on if this is infection control isolation or what type of isolation, you also have HVAC negative pressures and positive pressures when it comes to air handling so that it keeps the germs of the patient. This patient may be highly infectious and you don't want the germs to go in the hallway versus the other way around where they're highly contagious and susceptible to germs. You don't want the germs from the corridor coming into the patient room. The nurses will use the anteroom, and these two doors will both have closers on them quite frequently. So the nurse comes in, scrubs up, gets whatever they need, and then they go in to uh, attend to the patient through this door. You're only going to use this door when you need to move a patient in or out of the door. So when it comes to an isolation patient room, there's a lot of questions to make sure to ask the architect and owner regarding what type of pressures are going to be in the room, what type of patients are going to be in the room so that you can determine the appropriate hardware. But a hospital latch uh, is very common on both of these doors, just some kind of latching hardware. If you're using hospital latches and this needs to lock, you can use a mortise set with the, hosp the same hospital latch trim that you've been using on the rest of the facility, or you could use a lever that's really going to be uh, dependent on what else you have in, in the area. But they won't be in the same hardware set as a standard patient room. Other things to look for in hospitals, if this is a teaching hospital, you may have a conference center uh, education and look for operable partitions. An operable partition means that I'm going to be able to open this into one big space. When this is closed, each of these individual conference education rooms are small enough to only require one exit. But when this is open, you have 875 square feet and you divide that by the 15 square foot per person or 20 square foot per person, you have over 50 people, that makes this an area of assembly, a group A assembly. And then you would need an exit device on each one of these doors. And you see that there's card access. So you would use a fail secure exit device trim with a rim exit device on these doors. They're not super high frequency, they're just three foot wide. So standard weight, uh, anti-friction bearing with a door closer would work fine but just pay attention to dining areas, conference rooms, multi-purpose rooms, training rooms, things like that within a hospital where you could gather 50 or more people together. Those are red flag areas that could be assembly and uh, then they have to be treated with exit devices. Operating rooms. Unfortunately, we could not get into the operating rooms. This hospital had been open for three years when we went and did the videos. And for obvious reasons, we can't get into the operating rooms. They're in use. So I don't have any videos of the operating room area, but I do wanna discuss the types of, of hardware that you would be looking at. 
These pairs of doors swing into the operating rooms. They are behind a secured corridor, so they don't need a lock. They are in back of house area. These are smoke rated partitions, so they do need to latch. And they have the PP, the push plate on the wall. So these are automatic operators. And with automatic operators, wood doors that swing in, really the only option would be to use exit devices, uh, vertical rod exit device, less bottom rod with electric latch retraction, which seems backwards because you're going into the operating room. But because this is a back of house corridor and the staff knows that these are operating rooms, it's not going to be confusing. You're not gonna see the exit devices and think, oh, I can, I can exit through this operating room. That's not the intention of the exit device. The exit device is to latch the door, provide both doors, independent operation. You have passage trim on the inside and the, they did use wave switches here in the very cleanest part of the hospital. So you don't even have to touch the wall switch. You put your hand up close to it and it's going to open the door. So they're gonna bring the patients in. The patients will be prepped and they'll bring them in to the operating room from this direction using the power operators. The doctors, this is a clean corridor. It's also called a sterile corridor. The clean core is the doctors are gonna come in typically from the on-call area. Uh, they've probably been sleeping and they're ready to go. They scrub up and then they go through this door to get to into the operating room. So their hands are going to be clean. They're gonna be gloved. They're gonna be masked. They're gonna have you know their scrubs on and they're going to be hands-free coming through this door. So it does need to latch. It is a 45 minute rated door. So either a hospital latch, this is behind a secured corridor. So again, it doesn't need to lock. The doctors are very able to uh, just push on the hospital latch with their elbow to push that door open. And it is 45 minute rated, so you can have a half glass. They can see into the operating room. Doctors will come in and out of here. Couple other notes with this. I do have the hardware set for this pair. We'll talk about that in a second. I don't have the hardware set for this one. But whenever you've got closers on doors going into an operator room, you wanna make a note that the closer wants to be mounted, not in the operating room itself. We, we wanna keep the inside of the operating room as clean as possible. Same thing with the power operators. Let's take a look at the set. We have an OR pair with auto operator. We're using pivots rather than continuous hinges, rather than regular butt hinges. Pivots are the absolute best way to hang a door, even though these are not super heavy. These doors are only six foot wide, but they're relatively high frequency and they have got to be the most reliable doors in this hospital. Hospitals live and breathe from having all their operating rooms open. If they have to close down this operating room for service, they've got to close down this whole wing. They've got to put a bubble up, a plastic bubble up around the area to make sure that any dust and any uh, debris from somebody servicing the power operators or the doors, it doesn't get you know, into the clean area. So we've got to make sure, we want to make sure that these doors are very reliable. Pivots will do that. They are going to last for a very long time. They make the door open very easily and close very easily. The exit devices have the motor, or I mean the uh, electric latch retraction with the solenoid driven. So you do have the uh, controller, but Note the operations narrative. The exit device latch is held in the constant retracted position. The wall switch on either side actuates the operators. Why would we do that? If you think about it for a second, these doors are, they wanna operate just like push pull. When you put your hand next to the switch, the power operators wanna open the door rather than retracting the latch on the exit device every single time. Because in order to make these doors last for a very long time, the simplest and easiest is to
to have them almost like they're non-latching. They're a push-pull door. Because they're back of house, we already said they don't need a lock. And we don't want the latches retracting every time because that puts wear and tear on the exit devices. So the exit device latch stays in the constant retracted position. They are tied to the fire alarm system to release so that they do provide positive latching. These are a smoke partition and they do need to latch, but they don't need to latch every day, only if there's a fire. And that's what makes this set of opening, uh, this type of opening operate under a very long period of time without any, any kind of maintenance. So the simpler that you can keep this, the better. There are cases sometimes where you have operating rooms where the doors are 20 minute rated, where they're, where they're actually on a smoke partition with 20 minute requirement. There are other times where they are in a care suite behind and they don't have any smoke rating at all. If they don't have any smoke rating at all, they could be push pull, but always ask the question because of the air pressures within they keep the pressures inside those operating rooms at a certain temperature and a certain HVAC level, and that may push those doors open. So they may, even though they're not required to latch, if it's not a smoke partition, sometimes they still want them to latch because of the functionality. So always, there's a lot of questions when it comes to operating rooms. I've also seen other times where the doors swing out of the operating rooms and the hardware would be very similar. You could also use automatic flush bolts on the inactive leaf and the vertical rod exit device on the active leaf. I personally don't like to do it that way just because having the two exit devices, you know that you've got the independent use of either leaf and you don't have to worry about any the power operator could become a coordinator, but it's still, you wanna keep it as simple as possible. Does anybody have any questions or any other thing? The doctor, okay, so the question about the hardware set for the doctors, they have a hospital latch so that, yes, it's, it's hands-free. Once they scrub up and they've got their gloves on, they can use their elbow to push on that hospital latch to push in and get into the uh, single door that the doctors, the surgeons come in uh, from that single door. So yes, it is hands-free, but it is a 45 minute rated door and did need to latch. That's why the hospital latch works well. It's push-pull operation. You can use your elbow or the crook of your arm to push or pull that door and you don't have to touch the surface. Leaving the OR doesn't matter because their hands are already, they don't need to be sterile leaving the OR. But yes, it's still hands-free because it's a hospital latch. You could still use your, the crook of your arm to pull the door open. But going into the room is much more critical than leaving it when it comes to the, the surgeon. That's just a typo. Why do we only have one EPT? That's some of these sets have typos in them and that's all that is. There should be two, good catch. And two Electrolinx harnesses. Any other questions on operating rooms? Okay, next we've got a series of just some uh, interesting other types of openings. This is uh, inmate restroom. So the top of the door is angled so that they don't have ligature points. They would slide off. They've got a hospital latch with the handles pointing down, a continuous hinge with a hospital tip. And the bottom of the door is cut off 12 inches before the ground so that patients can be observed at any time, but without invading their privacy. Very simple opening. You can see that in the 
in the restroom and locker room area or in that whole area as a whole, you're going to be using high security, either Torx or spanner head screws for fasteners for any behavioral health, inmate area, any, any areas like that within a hospital, you want the spanner head or Torx security screws, and that would be specified in the hardware set and detailed as well. And very minimal furniture, everything is bolted to the wall. Everything is uh, very clean and not a lot of things that somebody could use to do harm to themselves or to other people. You may have doors that go out onto the roof and they may be raised above the bottom of the floor. So this is a time where coordinating the threshold with whatever they have for the sill condition. This does not need to meet ADA, so it's much higher than a half inch threshold. It's the latch track type threshold to provide a seal at this door. You can see that it's a lock. So you, you need a key to get out onto the roof, but it's free egress from the roof back in. And this is on the 10th floor of the 18 story building. So there's no worries about security. The door does have a door position switch if the door is opened, it would signal the security panel that the door is opened um, and then you can investigate if you need to. Weather stripping, storeroom function lock set so that you can't accidentally leave this unlocked. We don't want anybody just going out onto, onto the roof. Uh, the question, how is the inmate door hung? That was a Markar continuous hinge, but with a hospital tip. Any questions on door going onto a roof? It's not even a full height door. It's, I think it's only six foot tall. But this door is for maintenance purposes, by the way, for maintenance access. All of these windows here, uh, because of the way that this hospital did the onstage, offstage, they wanted every single patient room to receive light, whether they had uh, a window to the outside or not. And so this provides light to the patient rooms that are on the inner portion of the corridor. Infant protection is big when it comes to hospitals. This is the maternity floor and codes do allow us to lock these doors. My question to you, we, we see that we've got a mag lock here and it's going into the stair. We don't want somebody that isn't supposed to take that baby. If they get near this door, the door will lock. So if the nurse is carrying the baby or the mama is carrying the baby, they both have a tag on their wrist that matches the baby's tag and the sensor will not lock the door. But if a stranger or estranged father or somebody comes in and tries to steal the baby, the father or the stranger doesn't have the tag, the baby's tag will make this door lock. There is a card reader from the stair side that will get into the floor and you can see the through bolt for the mag lock. So the next polling question is, which special locking arrangement does the pictured infant protection fall under? Is that A, controlled egress, B, access controlled egress, C, electromagnetically locked egress, or D, delayed egress.
most people have voted. We'll give you a few more seconds. And I'm going to go back to this slide. Okay, so we'll start from the bottom. If this were delayed egress, there would be a sign posted on the door that says, uh, alarm will sound, you can exit in 15 seconds or 30 seconds. So this is not delayed egress. Electromagnetically locked egress has a sensor that's built into the handle that would unlock the door from the egress side. So that is not correct because if I turn this lever and that unlocks this lock, that defeats the purpose of having this lock. I'm not really locking this door. Access control egress is not correct because access control egress does include a mag lock, but from the egress side, which is this side, you would have a motion sensor and an emergency push button here. So the answer is A, controlled egress. Controlled egress means I can use a mag lock to lock the door from the egress side and tie it into the fire alarm system and all of the other requirements. I don't need a motion sensor. It's for the clinical needs of the patients that requires their detention or restraint. And in this case, a baby does not have any protection and so this is their protection. Also, all clinical staff need to carry the key or the credential to get through this door. But because this is part of infant protection, it also, most controlled egress would need to be tied to the fire alarm system. This does not need to be because it is part of infant protection. And we don't want somebody setting, you know, working with somebody and setting a, a small fire just to make sure that this door is unlocked so that they could steal the baby. And so the correct answer is controlled egress. Just make sure that you follow whatever the requirements are for your particular state because they will vary. The international building code varies from year to year and every state in the United States has adopted one version or another of the IVC. Sometimes NFPA 101 is in play when it comes to healthcare work. And so make sure that you understand the parameters of what is in play for your area. If you are not permitted by code to use controlled egress, then the only other solution for infant protection would be to use delayed egress. That particular one was not delayed egress, but you could use delayed egress if you're not allowed to use controlled egress. Just some more pictures of some miscellaneous hardware items. I know some of you had mentioned that you wanted to see a, a picture of a concealed overhead stop. This is a picture of a concealed overhead stop and you can see that it's got a door closer on here. Look how much meat is taken out of the top of this door. This is why even though the concealed overhead stop, you can look in the Rickson catalog and it can say, this can be used on a fire rated door up to XYZ rating. That's fine. That doesn't mean that the door has passed the test with a concealed overhead stop. Metal doors can because they can reinforce for that. But wood doors probably cannot because of all of this that you have to take out in order to make this slide track arm work. The other thing I wanna note is that this has swing clear hinges. The overhead stop and the closer would have to be special templated for use with the swing clear hinge. So whenever you have concealed overhead stops and closers or concealed overhead stops and special hinges or pivots, make sure you check the templating so that you order the doors correctly and make sure that if it is a fire rated opening, that that particular manufacturer of the door could be used uh, for that type of hardware. That's when you really have to go to the door manufacturer. It's not the hardware manufacturer at that point. You have to go to the door manufacturer. What have they tested? What is approved? The next one is 
This is a self-latching flush bolt. We had seen this in a previous opening. And in fact, I wanna ask you, what type of opening would you use this? So the next poll question is, which, pair, which type of pair would be the proper application for the pictured self-latching flush bolt? A, a corridor egress pair, B, a pair of electrical room, or C, a pair of patient bedroom? Few more seconds. And the answer is C, the patient bedroom. Self latching flush bolts fix the inactive leaf and hold it closed unless you push on the button to pull the door open. You can pull the door closed and it will be self latching when you pull the door closed but we don't use it on pair of corridor egress doors because you're gonna need uh, both leads for exit purposes and exit devices. You don't want a fixed leaf for a egress corridor. And same thing with electrical rooms. Exit devices are typically going to be required when you have either 800 or 1200 amps of equipment and we don't wanna have either leaf fixed. It's gotta have exit devices. So the pair patient bedroom is the correct answer there. Here is a hospital tip heavy duty prison hinge. As I mentioned, there is an inmate section here and you see that the barrel of the hinge is quite large. The hospital tip helps make sure that there's less chance for a ligature point there. You would use the security fasteners for these, for any items of hardware in behavioral health or inmate areas. Here's a close up of the Securitron IMXDA, the self-contained delayed egress. The green indicates you're good right now. Uh, the key switch for resetting, rearming. If this is red, it's in alarm mode. Here's a close up of the rescue hardware. This is the emergency stop the in-swing patient restroom with the rescue hardware to be able to swing the door out. You can push this in and then pull the door towards you to rescue the patient. I'm not gonna tell you the name of this. I want you to take a look at it. Our last poll question is on this next slide and it's in reference to what type of hinge is this? So what type of hinge was pictured on the previous slide? Is that A, a raised barrel, B, a full surface, C, a pivot, or D, a swing clear hinge? A few more seconds. Most of you have already answered. and we got 100% correct. That is a swing clear hinge. Good job. And those are good for getting the door out of the opening when the door is open 90 degrees. So as a recap, the location of the door. These are all factors for selecting the appropriate hardware. Uh, the door details, the width, the thickness, the weight, the height, the swing direction of the door, security of the door, the cleanliness, durable and reliable. When it comes to a hospital, that's job one. Uh, aesthetics in certain areas, especially patient rooms, it's been known that evidence-based design shows that it's better for the healing process if you don't feel like you're in an institution. 
cost is a factor. We do want to stay within budget. Codes and standards, very important when selecting appropriate hardware for a hospital. The number one factor is going to be the frequency of use and how many times a day, a week, a year that those door openings are going to be opened and closed. And that goes to the durable and reliability factor. You want to use the best available hardware that you can and ask questions. Make sure that the owner is involved in the decisions, but no question is silly. Learn as much as you can about flow of traffic. If you're going into a meeting with an architect and an owner, or if you are an architect prepping for a meeting with an owner and about hardware, get a feel for the, for the floor plan and the flow of traffic even before your meeting and think to yourself, what questions are you going to ask? If you've got doors that you've never seen before in a, in a particular area, do a little research on what is that type of room. Uh, there are certain names in, in types of rooms in hospitals that you've never heard of. And just do a quick Google search and, and read whatever you can about, about those kinds of things. Do we have any final questions before I advance to the final couple of slides? Why use door loops for door sensors and loop of door raceway? The sensors themselves are uh, by the power operator company and there's really no way to go through the hinge. There's nobody that makes a product. So that's why they use the door loop to get the power to those sensors. Remember that those sensors are not required for low energy operator, but they chose to use those anyway. And certainly whenever we have our hardware, we're going to use through through wires and uh, power transfers there. I don't know of anybody that makes a power transfer for up in here. I wanna remind people, if you haven't signed up tomorrow, we've got a class on calculating occupant load and egress width. And I've created this tool uh, to make code compliance easy. It's based on the International Building Code. It helps you calculate occupant loads, egress widths, quantity of exits, swing direction of doors, all with quick reference code compliant hardware. So you've got your, your, do you need exit devices? It'll even tell you the code reference so you can go look it up. Um, you can download and save your input and output data in PDF form. And it's a free tool that can be used with single sign-on our connect users or guest login. That class is tomorrow. You can look it up on Osablo Academy. Uh, we are going to be having other classes on that uh, once September 17th and October 1st, and then every couple of weeks until uh, the foreseeable future. I want to thank you all for your attendance for this series. I hope you got a lot out of it. My email address is here. If you have any questions on a project, and you wanna run something by me, a code question or a hardware question, I'll help you answer the question and point you in the right direction of your DSS person that you can also follow up with for any additional information you may need about any specific product. But thank you all for your attendance and have a wonderful day, great weekend and stay safe.